As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. A warm welcome to this service coming to you from St Nicholas Methodist Church at Topsham in Devon. My name's Stephen Lee. I'm one of the local preachers, the lay preachers that is, in the Exeter Coast and Country Circuit of the Methodist Church. And if it hadn't been for the lockdown, I'd have been leading worship in our church at Topsham. I'm very sorry not to be meeting friends there, but we do what we can. Uh, so here I am in my study in Exeter, and from here I give you, as I say, a very warm welcome wherever you are and whenever you're joining this service. And wherever and whenever we're sitting or standing, we come together to worship God. And so we turn to our opening hymn of praise. Peace come to God in prayer. Lord, we praise you that you believe in us. Every time we take one step, you take two. We ask for a break in the clouds, you rain down sunshine. We ask for mercy, you show love. We ask for success, <clears throat> you crown us with victory. Your love is too great for us to understand. Double our faith, double our courage, 
double our praise. Amen. But, Lord and Creator, we repay your love with half measures. You always believe in us, but we are slow to believe in you. You send us your sunshine, and we cloud it with suspicion. You send us your love, and we refuse to see our neighbours suffering. You give us victory, and we throw it away, struggling to defeat others. For the fullness of your love, we offer half-hearted praise. Hear the words of grace. God loves us and wants only for us to be the people he made us to be. He looks not to yesterday, but to today and to tomorrow. Our sins are forgiven. Let us go forward in the power of that forgiveness. Amen. So let us gather up our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer. I'll say it here. I hope you'll join in with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 25, 14 to 30, entitled The Parable of the T Talents. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents, and I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I do not scatter? 
then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have abundance, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Today's Bible reading, the parable of the talents, will surely have been very familiar to many of you. And yet, Jenny and I had to scratch around a bit to find a translation of the Bible that actually used that word talent. The thing is that 
in the time since the Bible was first translated into English, Jesus' stories have been told and retold so often that they've actually changed the English language. They've changed the meanings of several words. We're familiar with some of the cases. So a Samaritan, which originally meant a despised foreigner, you could say a frog or a kraut or whatever other insulting term for someone not one of us you want to choose, the Samaritan, which originally meant a despised foreigner, now seems means someone who's good and helpful. And a prodigal, which originally just meant someone who spent money freely, has now come to mean a wastrel. And so it is with a talent. A talent, as, as we're all probably vaguely aware, was originally a sum of money. But because of the interpretation that's usually put on this parable, it's come to mean something that we're good at. Now, I want to suggest in a minute or two that that interpretation isn't the only possible one and maybe isn't the most helpful one. But let's just pause for a moment to remind ourselves just how much money a talent was. Actually, it was originally a unit of weight and then by extension became a unit of money just by representing that weight of gold. Rather like a pound, actually, if you think about it. And like a pound or a dollar, there were different talents uh, employed by different uh, countries and empires. But the one Jesus was probably familiar with was a gold ingot weighing about just under 60 kilograms, a chunk of gold as big as an ordinary brick. And it's an, in today's money, that would be worth a huge sum. It would cost you about 2.7 million pounds. In the ancient world, it was worth, depending a bit on what source you follow, seven to nine thousand denarii, the coin used to pay for a day's labour. So a single talent was in effect the value of a man's work for 25 to 30 years, his whole working life. And of course, that huge value puts a bit of a perspective on what the master in the parable could have expected his servants to do. Not indeed to be financiers earning interest from the money. That would after all wouldn't have been very profitable in the Jewish world where the exacting of large amounts of interest was forbidden. No, they, should, they were intended to be capitalists. Even with a single talent, even the dimmest servant could have employed not one man for a lifetime, but 30 men for a year. He could have created a profitable business for his master. Now, as I said, the conventional interpretation of this parable is so utterly conventional that it's changed our language. We've come to see the parable, the talents in the parable, these sums of money, as representing the abilities that God has given us, our God-given talents. And so the word talent has come to mean an ability, and it's entirely from its use in this parable. And so we tend to use this parable to beat ourselves up to accuse ourselves of not using our God-given talents fully in the service of our master. I want to give you a different interpretation, which I think might be more helpful. When I started thinking about today's service, I turned to one of the more unconventional biblical commentaries on my bookshelves. 
It's called The Gospel at Solentiname. And it was written by one of the more unconventional of Catholic priests, a man called Ernesto Cardinal. Born as an upper-class Nicaraguan, got involved in student protests against the Somozan dictatorship, went to the United States to become a monk and eventually a priest, and returned to a remote area in Nicaragua, where he became parish priest to the local community of peasant fishermen, and actually to some artists who hung around there because of its beautiful landscape. His book, the Gospel at Solentinami recounts the conversations he had about gospel passages with his parishioners. The local peasantry was deeply involved in the revolutionary struggle against the Somoza dictatorship. They were Christians, but until Ernesto arrived, I don't think they'd been used to thinking for themselves about the gospel. They'd had priests who just told them stuff. And so when they did start to think, they often came up with some fresh ideas. Now, when Ernesto told the revolutionaries the parable of the talents, they were not impressed. That's a lousy parable, said one. Ugly agreed another. They saw it as an endorsement of the capitalism they were trying to fight. But the conversation went on and eventually they talked themselves around to a different perspective. They recognised that after all the story was a parable and that Jesus had told it for a reason and he had something in mind. And the following conversation ensues. What God wants us to multiply is love. Love is what God has given to all of us in different quantities. I see it now. The ones who have loved humanity a lot have also received a lot of love and they've duplicated it. Some have received more and others less, but everybody ought to double what they have. So what I want to leave you with this morning is this thought. Don't let's use this parable to beat ourselves up for not using our God-given talents in his service. Rather, let's praise him for the lifetime's worth of love he's poured out for each of us. And so let's shine that love outwards to others in every minute of our lives. Amen. We're going to join in a short prayer of thanksgiving. But in an online service, of course, we can't have the usual collection. But giving to the church goes on by other means. So within our prayer of thanks, we'll also dedicate to God the gifts that we continue to bring. So let us pray together. We thank you, O God, for all your rich gifts to us. We thank you for your love, poured out to each one of us, able to sustain us all our lives through. We thank you for the stories of Jesus, inexhaustible riches for our instruction and our inspiration. And we thank you for those who preserved them for us through 2000 years. And we thank you too for the simple gifts that sustain our everyday life. 
May we never ever take them for granted and may we always seek to bring back to you something of what you give to us. And so we dedicate to you the gifts that we do bring, gifts of money for the work of your church and of our talents and our love for your service. Amen. And now our prayers for others. Since these prayers are of course pre-recorded, we can't be aware of the latest events. So after each short prayer, I'm going to leave a pause where we can each of us remember what is most on our minds, whether it's the latest news or what lies closest to our individual hearts. And then I'll offer the familiar bidding, Lord, in your mercy, and I ask you to join with me in the response. Hear our prayer. So we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, in this week in which our news has been full of the richest and most powerful nation on earth, we turn our thoughts to the poor and the powerless. May those who have much learn that true riches consist in upholding those who have nothing. And may those who have nothing be enabled to rejoice in the riches of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, in this week in which we have allowed ourselves to hope that the present pandemic may yet be beaten, we turn our thoughts to those whose hope is exhausted. We lift up to you those who are mourning family members who've died in the pandemic. Those who have worked till they could work no more to defeat it. Those who are lonely and despairing in lockdowns in many countries. May each of them know that when hope seems dead, your love is still beside them, your spirit within them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, in this week in which we have each known both joy and sorrow, we remember those for whom sorrow seems never ending. We hold in our hearts friends and family members who are sick or sad and all who are far from those they love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.
Go now as faithful servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept the love he gives you. It will confront and challenge you. Allow it to comfort you and multiply that love to each person that you meet or speak to or think of in the week that is to come. And now, though we cannot see one another, let us bless one another by saying the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.